Hello everyone and welcome to our new video <clears throat> on the helm and uh, basically in this series we are discussing about the helm and this video is in continuation to our last video which we have created so if you have not gone through our previous video on helm I will suggest you to go through those videos first and then continue on this one. All right, so that being said, uh, let's continue. In this video, we are going to discuss about uh, on uh, how we can create our own health charts, right? So what are the basic uh, understandings that we need to have in order to create and write our own health charts to deploy our own custom applications that we want to deploy over the Kubernetes. Now, by creating health charts, you are going to create, you are going to reuse and share the uh, charts with others, uh, you are going to automate the deployment and effectively manage the changes inside your application. Okay, so these are the advantages of writing your own Helm chart and why you should be writing your own Helm chart. So let's, uh, we are going to divide this further into the seven topics so that we are able to understand this into a better way. And then we are going to later perform the labs for writing our own Helm charts as well. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Our first topic is understanding the basic Helm chart structure. Now Helm chart is basically a collection of your YAML templates, which are used to create the Kubernetes objects such as your deployment services and other components. So whenever you are deploying your application, you need to write a deployment uh, YAML configuration, which might consist of your config map, which might consist of your uh, secrets and other such related uh, uh, Kubernetes objects. And then there is services through which you are going to access your uh, application and so on, right? So basically all these uh, different uh, YAML files that you usually create, you can put that inside your Helm charts. Now charts are going to include the metadata information such as um, your name of the chart, your version of the chart, dependencies, uh, like if your application dependent upon some other application and so on. So the chart structure is going to include the following files, which are basically charts.yaml. That is the first file, which contains metadata about your, uh, that is made, uh, more information about the chart itself. So you are going to include name, version, and dependencies. Then there is values.yaml. This file is going to contain the values of your chart variables that you have uh, included. So within the chart, uh, dot yaml uh, you describe me more information about your charts while in the values dot yaml you are going to pass the default values that you want to pass now you can override those values using hyphen hyphen set parameter that we have already discussed and then there is templates directory which basically consists of all your yaml files which you would have otherwise used to create the kubernetes objects which you want to deploy like your deployments your services and your ports etc Okay, so these are the three most common ones that you will see out there whenever you find any Helm uh, uh, repository. Mostly these three would be there. And then there is a readme file, which basically explains how you are going uh, uh, to create, how that uh, chart has been created, the instructions, the information about that chart, and all relevant information through which you can understand and uh, uh, the details about that chart and what you can expect out of it, right? So basically these four files, basically chart.yaml, values.yaml, templates directory, and readme file would be there, which will help you create your Helm chart structure, okay? Now, once you have uh, uh, created these, uh, now next comes your, you need to define your chart metadata. So within, um, I, I, we started with the chart.yaml, right? right? So now when we discuss about chart.yaml, basically we said that the, it would contain the metadata and for more information about our chart, including the chart name, version, and dependencies. So uh, uh, this information will be useful for others to use your chart and provide necessary information about your chart. So here is an example, which starts with API version that you have defined. In this case, it's V2, your name of the chart. In this case, it's my chart, but it can be anything depending upon what application you are trying to install. Then a description, uh, which is explaining the use case of this chart and uh, the version of the chart and the app version. Now um, you are seeing this version and app version. So what is the major difference between this version and app version inside the chart.yaml. So when you uh, uh, define a version, basically a version is uh, uh, representing the version of the Helm chart itself rather than the version of the application. So you need to understand there are two things. Uh, we Using the Helm charts, we are deploying our application, right? So there are two things. One is Helm chart as well as application. 
Now Helm chart is going to have its own version. That is what we refer to as version here, which basically represents your chart version. Then your application itself will be uh, created and built over a period of time to include more and more features. So your application is also going to have a version that is what we refer to as app version here. Now the version number must uh, follow the rules of semantic versioning specification. And we already discussed about the semantic versioning, uh, which includes your major version, minor version, and your patch version. So for uh, uh, getting more details into the semantic versioning, you can refer to our previous videos in which we have discussed about the semantic versioning in more details. Okay, And this is important for managing the chart over the time. The version number must be implemented for each new release of the chart that is made available for the deployment. That way you can incrementally track all the changes that have been done into the chart. And even if you want to retrieve some old version, that would still be available for you. So that is about the version. Next is app version. Now app version uh, field basically represents the version of your application or the service that the chart is deploying rather than the version of the chart itself. Now it is a string. so. Uh, it can be used to track the versions of your deployed application and service and defer the version of the chart that deployed it. This field is optional and provides flexibility uh, for keeping the versioning on the application chart separate. So basically you need to understand that uh, app version is totally isolated to overall Kubernetes. It is something which you are internally tracking for the different version your applications that you have released and the what functionality that they would be having, right? So indirectly, it's not related to Kubernetes. It is for tracking which version of your application is currently live in the production environments. And that is how you can actually use it. So version is representing the chart and app version is representing the application version, okay? For example, in the chart.yaml, we are using 1.0.0 that is uh, could be uh, basically your chart package while 3.2.1 is your application uh, uh, version which you have deployed okay so don't confuse between them uh, both are having a separate now uh, if you look at the version field represents basically your hand chart version in the above example and it follows a semantic versioning and the, your uh, app version represents your application version and uh, okay so it represents the application inside your chart definition Okay, now next is you are going to define the values.yaml. I told you values.yaml is going to contain the default values for your variables, which is used in the chart, such as your replicas, image, ports, right? So you are what you are trying to achieve with values.yaml is you are trying to create a dynamic configuration, which can be uh, change uh, when you are deploying the application itself, right? So you can pass some default values. If uh, you are deploying, you can directly pass it. If you are not uh, giving any set values, then it's going to directly deploy those values. But if you are going to pass hyphen hyphen set, you can change it on the fly and use the dynamic configuration through which you don't have to rewrite the same configuration again and again to deploy the various application which you might be having. Okay. <clears throat> so what you are going to contain inside the values.yaml is your replica count, how many ports you want, images uh, like from which image repository you want to pick, which is what is the image version and so on. And the service, uh, what type of service it is, whether it's a, a cluster IP service, whether it's a node port service, load balancer and so on, and which port the application is running. So basically all these information is actually what differs between the application to application. That is why we have kept it inside the values.yaml. Now, next is you are going to create a Kubernetes manifest using the YAML templates. These templates, the template directory in the Helm chart contains your YAML file through which you are going to create your Kubernetes manifest. Now, um, you can use this manifest, which are written basically in the Go template language, and you are going to create the reusable Kubernetes objects such as deployment services ports, right? So uh, these are basically the YAML files which we would have anyways created in order to create the different components inside our Kubernetes. So Helm uses these templates to generate the Kubernetes objects when the Helm chart is installed. For example, let's take a look at this example. This is, example is basically for a deployment, which is actually showing you the uh, deployment YAML, uh, which we can use to deploy our application inside the Kubernetes. So if you see here, we have basically uh, characterize this in the form that uh, it's going to represent the dynamic values which we have passed in the form of dot chart name. Um, you know, so this dot chart name will be uh, created when as soon as we create the application using the helm, the name that we are going to pass, it will automatically be coming here. So that is what the chart name represents here. Then there is a replicas. Uh, this replica account will be coming from up here where we have passed one. So this replica account will be 
pick from the values.yml and replace with it unless you pass some hyphen hyphen set value which override the default value of one okay then chart name again all these values will be dynamically propagated using the chart name and then comes the container now the name of the container is again on the basis of chart name and then there is an image uh, where we are passing the image repository and the image tag now these values are again going to be picked from the values dot yaml file that we have passed here so basically these uh, repository name and the tag of 1.16 so nginx 1.16 version will be installed if we are to run this uh helm configuration using the this uh, uh kubernetes manifest that we have created so you are seeing this manifest will be created at the runtime and whatever values we are going to pass accordingly these manifests are going to get manipulated as well okay then once you have written this you can validate the chart it is important that you validate and before uh, actually distributing it uh, so you can use the helm lint uh, command this helm lint command is going to validate your uh, uh, yaml configuration your templates your um, uh, values.yaml and everything uh, to val validate if there is some issue with it or not so this command if you are having some syntax error or some linting error then this command should be able to detect it and give you that error so that way you can be sure that when you run these helm uh, install command later when you have the package for it then you can actually be able to install it so uh, uh, otherwise, if you have some error, this should be able to throw that error and help you uh, uh, troubleshoot that out as well. Okay, next is once you have uh, linting is successful, you can go ahead and package the uh, chart. For packaging the chart, you are uh, need to convert the uh, uh, directory that you have initially created. In this case, my chart, you need to convert it into the dot dot tgz file how do you convert it into a dot tgz basically a binary file you can use the helm package command now when you run the helm package command over the complete directory where you have created all your uh, templates um, you know, the values.yml and uh, all the files then uh, you can run this helm package it's going to take the complete directory and going to convert it into a t dot tgz file which helm recognizes and will help you in installing then you can uh, you know, pick this packages and put it inside some artifactory and you can distribute with the other folks inside your team or the other teams which you might be having in your organizations and which and that way they can um, install the packages directly using the helm uh, uh, packages that you have put inside your artifactory now in summary this helm charts is a key aspect for deploying your custom application over the services in the kubernetes by understanding the um, basic helm uh, structure uh, defining the chart metadata default variables writing the kubernetes manifest using the yaml templates and validating the charts and packaging it you can create reusable and shareable hel helm charts now this is very important because um, see once you have written this it can be used across your multiple projects so it makes the things very reusable in nature and these are the general steps that you need to perform while writing your helm charts and uh, uh, this is a one time activity and can be used multiple times unless you are upgrading the version in which case you will have, have to upgrade your helm charts and you will have to upgrade the helm chart version as well as the application version which you can also handle using the helm itself and with the minimal uh, uh, in destruction and uh, everything will be automated so it makes the managing of the application over the kubernetes um, super easy and that is the de facto standard of managing the applications and deploying the application over the kubernetes itself all right so that's all uh, for this video uh, so if you have not subscribed to our channel do subscribe to our channel also if you are having some doubts related to this video or any other video do uh, leave it in the comments i will try to reach back to you all right that's all for this video thank you everyone